build the most efficient landscape and habitats, attract the animals to win in harmonies. And today we'll be teaching you how to play harmonies, game designed by Johan Benvenuto and published by Libelu. And hello everyone, it's Stella. And Tarrant here from Maple University. Alright, let's get to the classroom. Harmonies is a tile drafting and pattern building game in which players will be trying to make up the best ecosystem they can. Players will take and arrange sets of landscape tiles, making combinations to have the highest scoring landscapes, as well as drafting and fulfilling the patterns on animal cards to score those points as well. Whosever ecosystem can score the most for landscapes and animals will be the winner. To set up the basic game, give each player a board and a scoring card, each flipped to the brown sides. Place the drafting board in the centre of the table, choose a first player and point it towards that player. Shuffle all of the tokens in the bag and deal three onto each point of the drafting board. Shuffle up the deck of black backed animal cards and deal out five face up into a row. Keep a supply of orange animal cubes nearby for later use. You're now ready to play. Harmonies is played in turns, starting from the first player and going clockwise around the table until the end of the game. On your turn, you take the following actions in any order. You must draft one set of three tiles from the central board and add them legally to your board. You may choose one card from the central supply, adding it to your board and loading it up with animal cubes and you may move any number of animal cubes to legal positions on your board. Once your turn is done, refill the drafting board from the bag and the card row from the deck if applicable. Play then passes to the next player clockwise. So now let's look at each step in detail. First is drafting tiles. You must choose one of the five sets of three tiles and take them all, then place them legally on your board. You're always able to place a tile on the first level in an empty space. And you can make any of these eight legal stacks by stacking tiles on top of ones you've already placed. It's easiest to think of these stacks thematically. Grey tiles represent stone and you can stack them into mountains of height 1, 2 or 3. Brown tiles are wood and green tiles are leaves and you can stack these into different combinations of trees. This includes ground level bushes, tree trunks of height 1 or 2, or trees of height 2 or 3. And the red tiles represent clay and you'll be using this to construct buildings. A building is always a stack of height 2 and it always involves a foundation of clay, wood or stone with a clay tile stacked on top. Those are the only legal stacks. You cannot have any other combination, which in particular means neither field nor water may ever have a tile stacked atop them. The only other rule is that once a stack has a cube on top, you're not allowed to stack any further tiles on top. The second action is to take a new animal card, and you may do this at most once per turn. Choose any one card from the face-up display and place it into an empty slot above your player board. You can hold at most four cards at once, so right now I wouldn't be able to take the action again. Now fill each of the scoring slots on your new card with one animal cube from the supply. The third option on your turn is to place animal cubes and you may do this as many times as you qualify for. You do this by matching the patterns printed on the animal cards. You must match the heights of the stacks exactly as shown, but may have the pattern in any rotational orientation you like. You clear cubes off these cards from lowest to highest. Let's suppose I drafted these three tiles. If I place this tile here, I have now matched this pattern with two level one trees and a river. The card depicts that the river should get a cube on it, so I take the lowest cube and place it onto the river with any one of the three foundation types. The key to the game is efficiency. Each tile can be a part of multiple patterns, but each tile may only have a single animal cube on it. So you need to work out the best way to achieve this. 
This river placement now creates this penguin's pattern on both these three tiles, allowing this animal placement, and these three tiles, allowing this placement. It won't allow an animal here because this is a level two mountain, which doesn't match the carp. However, placing this field here, although it creates the pattern two more times, does not allow any more cubes to be placed because the cube placement space is already full. As soon as the final cube from a given card has been placed, that card is complete. You may put it off to the side, freeing up a space to add a new card as a subsequent action. The end of the game may be triggered in one of two ways. Either when one player has two or fewer empty spaces remaining on their board at the end of their turn, or when the drafting board cannot be completely refilled. Continue playing until all players have had the same number of turns and then proceed to final scoring. There are two main parts to scoring, your landscapes and your animals. The five ways of scoring the landscapes are shown on this card. Your trees will score according to how tall they are as long as there's leaves on top. So level one is one point, level two is three points, and level three is seven points, but any trunks with no leaves score nothing. Mountains also score for height as long as they're part of a mountain range. So a single level mountain scores one, a two level mountain scores three, and a three level mountain scores seven. But if the mountain is not adjacent to any other mountains, like this one here, then it scores nothing, regardless of height. Fields score for contiguous groups of size two or larger, but get no additional points for being larger than two. So this set of three linked fields would be worth five points. This single field scores nothing. A building scores five points as long as there are at least three different colors of tiles on the tops of the stacks adjacent to it. This building has yellow, blue, and gray adjacent to it, so it would score five points. This building has only yellow and gray, so it would score nothing. Be clear that it's only the top tile that matters. You couldn't look at adjacent buildings with different foundations, for example, and consider them different. Finally, to score the river, look for your longest, shortest path. That is, find any two river points, find the shortest path between them, and whatever is your longest one of those scores points based on its length. This shape here counts as length four because you can get from point A to point B by passing this tile. Finally, each animal card scores based on its highest cleared space. So these would be nine, 16, 10, and four points. The player with the highest score wins. If tied, whoever placed the most animal cubes breaks the tie, and if still tied, victory is shared. There are two variants which come with the base game of harmonies. The first variant is to use the island side of the board, and when you do this, you'll also use the island side of the landscape scoring card. There is only one change to the way the landscapes score, and this is for the river. Now what you're looking to do is use these rivers to split the main island into a series of sub-islands, and you'll score five points for each sub-island you create, regardless of its size. Here, for example, I've created two islands, one on this side and one on this side, so it would score ten points. While placing this increases the count of islands to four, and would score twenty. The other variant is to use the white Nature's Spirit cards. In setup, shuffle these up and deal two to each player. The players will look at them, choose one they wish to keep, and return all unchosen cards to the box. Players place these into one of their four animal card slots. It counts towards that limit, and take one of the clear colored cubes and place it in the top corner. Placing the clear nature spirit cube onto your board works exactly the same way as placing any orange animal cube. And just like the animal cubes, once you've done this, you move the card off to the side and you've unlocked its points. However, unlike an animal card, an unlocked spirit card does not score a fixed number of points. It unlocks an extra endgame scoring objective based on your other placements. Here, for example, this card is worth two points for each river tile you've placed, and with nine here, that would make this an 18-point card. Spirit points are scored in addition to anything else you might get for those tiles. 
In this case, I would still also count my length seven river for 19 points. And that's how to play harmonies. Thanks so much for watching and sticking around. Your like and comments are much appreciated. Subscribe to see what's coming and hopefully you have a wonderful day. See you next time.